Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and welcome back to another video. And today I'm going to show you my new gaming desk setup, something that I've been building over the last two weeks. I'll cover everything I've added to it, including the screen, desk, all of my accessories, and this incredible gaming chair. I will also show you how I've sorted my cable management and how I've tried to keep all of the wires out of sight. Now this desk setup will not be replacing my TV setup that I use for gaming, and it won't be replacing my other desk setup that I use for working. This new one will basically just be used for gaming on the PlayStation 5 in my living room. I hope you enjoy today's video and don't forget to hit that like button and sub to the channel if you want to see more gaming content from me. Everything that I show you in today's video is linked in the description along with the timestamps. Okay, so this is the desk that I'm using. It's a Motri standing desk from FlexiSpot. I've gone for a full black style, so I've got the black wooden top and the black metal frame. I really like the look of this combo. Now, most of the time I will be sitting at the desk as I'll only be using it for gaming, but the fact that I can set the height for both sitting and standing at a press of a button is great. So this little control panel here, this lets me set up to four different heights. I've got number one for sitting and I've got number two for standing. One tap on the button and it will move to that height that I've already set. Or if I want to, I can manually press the arrows to adjust it myself. The motors are pretty quiet as well. It's just a very slight whine while it's in use. Also, when it's at its standing height, it's actually very, very sturdy. Now, this is something both the FlexiSpot and the Autonomous Desk have in common. There's no wobble, there's no flex on these, and they feel really solid and secure. The only thing that I would like to see added to stand-in desk is better cable management. Some kind of trunking or tube where I can run a cable from the top down to the floor. Maybe it could be hidden inside the legs. I will show you later how I've managed to hide the cables out of sight. On my desk I've got the PlayStation 5 and this is what I used to play probably 90% of the time now. Over the last year I've used this a lot for games like Call of Duty, Ratchet and Clank and Kena. I've definitely downloaded and started far more games than I should admit to. And my backlog of games is getting ridiculous now. But the game I'm most hooked on at the moment, which is free, is Warzone. It's awesome playing with mates and family a few nights a week. But I think when it comes to story-based games, I'll always prefer playing on my TV setup. There's just something about sitting on the sofa and gaming is just so chill. Now for me, the PlayStation 5 has been incredible so far. Even though I've got access to the Xbox Series X, I've just preferred playing on this. And it's definitely been my go-to throughout 2021. And as you can see, looking at the side of the console, I've actually added these black plates along with the black centerpiece, trying to keep with that matte black theme. These were from Dbrand, and I did actually do a video about these just a few months ago when they launched. Now, if you've heard of Dbrand already, you'll be aware that they very recently actually removed these plates from sale. That was due to a Sony copyright issue. But they've actually, in the last week or so, just re-added these back onto their website. So if you want to change the look of your PlayStation 5, it's really easy to do. These plates on the side, they actually just clip off and you can clip on a different colour. And sticking out the back of the PlayStation 5 is a 1TB SanDisk Extreme SSD. I use this to store my PlayStation 4 games on. And also something that you cannot see from looking at it, but I've added a 2TB SSD internally. And I use that to store my PlayStation 5 games on. Now this update went live a couple of months ago from Sony, which allows you to use that internal bay to increase the storage size of your console. So over the last few months or so, I have been trying to find a new gaming monitor for this setup, and this is one that I've landed on. And I think this could be the perfect monitor for gaming. This is the 27 inch LG GP950 and it is a beast of a monitor. I know a lot of people will probably use this monitor for PC gaming as it's got a 144Hz screen, but it's absolutely perfect for console gaming too. It's a 4K screen that supports VRR, 120Hz and HDMI 2.1. This means it's ready for the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. It also supports AMD FreeSync and G-Sync as well as HDR. But it is so fast. It's got a one millisecond response time and an incredibly low input lag. Now I'm used to playing on the C1 LG's OLED, which is rapid, and this feels very, very similar. I don't know the exact figures as I couldn't find it on LG's website, but take it from me, this is quick. It's an IPS panel, so while sitting straight on, it looks great. The colors look vibrant and everything I've played on it looks awesome. I've been pretty spoilt with playing on the LG OLED, so the contrast on this cannot really compete, but it is not bad at all. But as there are limited dimming zones, it means that the dark scenes look kind of grey. And as soon as you go off center, which you won't really do while gaming, you can see the colors look slightly washed out. On a TV, this would probably be an issue, but on a monitor, it's of no concern at all. I usually fit LED strips to the back of my TVs or monitors, but the GP950, well, that comes with RGB lighting built in. You can set it to different colors if you want some nice ambient lighting. 
I usually have it set to white, but this is what it looks like if you go for the rainbow mode instead. Not something that I will use, but it definitely sets a nice vibe. But one thing worth mentioning is how easy it is to set this monitor up, as no tools are required at all. The screen just clips into the stand, and the stand attaches to the legs just using two screws that are built in. The screen can then be adjusted as you would expect, so it can be tilted, it can be moved up and down, or it can be pivoted around. So you could use it in either a portrait or a landscape mode. But yeah, this monitor has been incredible. Every game that I've played on it looks great, it's been really responsive, and I've had no issues at all so far. Now, if there's any interest and you think you would like to see a full review of this monitor, the GP950, drop that in the comments and it might be something that I do over the next few weeks. And here's the chair that I'm using. This is the Herman Miller Embody, which is in collaboration with Logitech. And this is the best chair that I've ever had. It looks awesome, it's incredibly comfy, and the design and features are literally good for you. So first, when it arrives, it's actually fully assembled. You literally just roll it out of the box and you're good to go. Now I've built enough chairs over the years to really appreciate just how useful this is and a massive time saver. I also really like the look of it. It's kind of got the perfect balance between an aesthetic office chair and a gaming chair. And I've gone for the all black version here, but it's also available in blue. But what makes the Embody gaming chair special is the support that it offers your back, which let's face it, is pretty important. So no matter how you sit in it, it provides support to your spine at the lowest point. And it's actually supposed to mimic the same posture that you get from standing. It not only supports your back, but it will also adjust to your own shape so it feels a little bit more natural. Now you'll notice it's got no hard frame, so if you look around the top, around the edges, there's no frame here like you'd normally see in a chair. It means that when you move and you turn, the whole chair kind of flexes with you, and it is so comfy to sit in. The seat itself is made from foam, it's actually got a cooling foam to prevent heat buildup. Plus it feels really soft yet firm. It makes you kind of want to sit properly. You can adjust the back fit to work with the curvature of your spine. The seat depth can be adjusted so you have support under your legs. There's a lever on the side, you can change the seat height. And finally the arms can be moved, both in height and width. Personally I think this is the nicest looking gaming chair that you can buy. Now obviously the other Herman Miller chairs are probably from an aesthetic point of view nicer looking, but the Embody Logitech G definitely offers that perfect combination. But this chair is not cheap, it's actually £1,275 or $1,595, but it will be the last gaming chair that I'm going to need for a very very long time. It also comes with a 12 year warranty for both parts and labour, that's huge. This chair will probably outlive everything else on my setup. Now I might actually do a dedicated video or a review about this chair maybe in a few weeks or a few months or so. Under the chair I'm using one of these floor mats so it's a hard plastic mat rather than a soft flexi one. This means it doesn't move or bend much when I'm using it. It also means that it's a lot easier to move the chair around instead of using it on the carpet. When it comes to the accessories around my desk I don't have many as I've tried to keep it pretty minimal. Plus as I don't work from here I don't really need much on display. I've got a black DualSense controller, now this is the official Sony one that they released a few months back and it's sitting in a walnut wooden stand from Geek Made Designs. I've got a few of their items around the house, including the wooden PlayStation icons and some other controller stands. And here's the headset that I'm using. These are the SteelSeries 7Ps, and I've been massively impressed with these. Having used about three different headsets over the last year on the PlayStation 5, these have definitely been the best that I've used so far. They do need a USB dongle plugging into the front of the PlayStation 5, but it's pretty small and you don't really notice it. And they are sitting on a wooden headset stand from GroveMade, and this matches nicely with that walnut controller stand. Here's a felt desk pad that I've also got from Grove Made. Now I don't really need a mat as I'm not using a keyboard and mouse, but I think it breaks the large black top up and adds a nice little bit of contrast. It's also somewhere where I can put my drinks and other things without scratching or leaving marks. Now I've not got around to setting this up yet, but I've also got one of these Elgato 4K 60S Plus capture cards. It will let me capture gameplay up to 4K 60 on both the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. I can then edit and upload those to my YouTube gaming channel. At the moment I upload my gameplay footage straight from the console, so it will be interesting to see if this adds any extra quality to those videos. Next to my desk I've got this floor standing lamp from Ikea. I've had it for about 5 years but they do still sell it. Inside the lamp I'm using a LifeX bulb and it means I can actually change the colour depending on the mood that I want to set. Most of the time it's set to a nice clean white, but if I want to change it up to a purple or a blue I can do so using my phone or my voice. And this is my shelving, so if you've seen my living room setup tour that I did a few months ago, you would have seen all of this already. But it's got random items on it like my PlayStation merch, controllers, N64 complete with GoldenEye. Then at the bottom I've got the Xbox Series S and Series X. I don't really need both, but what I'll probably do is I'll get my children to use the Series S while I can use the Series X. One thing that I always try to keep on top of with my setups is cable management. I've said it before, but I hate seeing cables on display. 
With a standing desk, it's not quite as easy as any cables you attach to the side of the legs need to be able to move when the table goes up and down. So instead of running all of the power cables from the PlayStation 5 and the monitor down to the floor, I've actually fitted a power socket under the desk itself. It now means I can actually swap the plugs out and anything that I wish to add or remove is going to be a lot easier and a lot quicker this way. Then to try and keep all the cables and all the wires out of sight, I've actually used some of these small clips I bought from Amazon. So these little clips, they open up and they allow you to obviously slide the cables in and then you can clip them closed. So what I've done is I've taken these clips and I've stuck them to the bottom of the table as well as on the legs themselves. It now means I can run all of the cables through them. I actually used to use tape or cable ties, but this works a lot better and is a lot neater too. Now when looking at the desk, you cannot see any cables and it looks really clean. Now even when the desk moves up and down, you can't really see many cables. I just wish the monitor had a better cable management solution built in, just like with the LG Ergo Arms. That does a great job of hiding the cables and it means you don't have any loose cables behind. But this strange obsession that I have with hiding cables, it probably won't be an issue for you, but hopefully this little tip of using these clips will definitely be useful for your own setup. In terms of future plans for this setup, I don't really have any. I set out to create something simple and easy to maintain and somewhere that I could game from if I wanted to free up the TV for my family. I don't need any speakers or anything else that I would normally add to my desk setup, so I think this is probably it. It would also be nice to build a gaming PC, something clean and minimal, but although it would look great, it's probably something that I wouldn't use at all, but it could make for a cool video. So this is it, this is my gaming desk setup. Overall, I'm really happy with what I've built. It's pretty simple looking, but it's practical for me. Any ideas, suggestions, or improvements, please drop those in the comments. Well, you've just made it to the end of today's video, so thank you for watching. And if you drop a nice gaming setup in the comments, I will give you a thumbs up for staying until the end. And here's another couple of videos that you might be interested in watching next. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on so you don't miss my next upload. You can also follow me over on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time.